Thank, thank you very much for this very nice welcome. Uh, as you see, I'm on my holiday, so I've come directly from my holiday, and uh, I'm a bit more informal than I am usually in this picture and in other places, and hopefully I'll get back into the work rhythm for this, uh, for this discussion. But the main thing that I really want to pass a message to you these days, uh, today, is that uh, the European Commission has a very pro-innovation, a very supportive attitude towards blockchain technologies to fintech in general. Sonda mentioned the FinTech Action Plan, which uh, we produced, which came out with a whole set of actions, one of which is the European Blockchain Initiative, which started with FinTech but goes much more broadly. Those of you who work in blockchain know it has application to supply chains, to other types of services, health, etc. And we have ambitions in all of them. That doesn't mean by any means that we forget the financial application applications. And let me see, here I can advance. So the discussion today is European leadership in a digital technology. The European Blockchain Partnership aims for a cross-border blockchain services infrastructure. This is coming out of a declaration that was signed on the 10th of April at uh, European uh, Digital Day, which is something led by our commissioner, Maria Gabriel. Uh, the FinTech Action Plan is also in collaboration with our own Vice President, Valdis Dombrovskis. But the digital single market is Maria Gabriel, who I work directly for. And what we were looking at here, the goal for Europe to take a global re lead in the rollout and uptake of blockchain infrastructure technology. Where should we intervene? This should be for the public sector. Ideally, public sector initiatives to carry as well a lot of benefits for the banks, other private sector uh, actors. I mean, one of the examples being a model, the, the ARPANET, which became the internet coming out of a United States uh, innovation procurement, uh, coming out of the D DARPA um, program, the Department of Defense. So we have a similar idea here of supporting blockchain for cross-border services. We have uh, basically all the member states having signed up now, plus Norway. I think Italy is signing this week, and Croatia and Cyprus have said they were going to sign. Latvia was one of the original signatories, and everyone else has signed. Um, as I mentioned, it will concentrate on this infrastructure, which can support cross-border digital public services by public authorities, and in the future, enable it to be used by startups and other innovators, as well as the services, the platforms, and so on, would probably be bought by an innovation procurement, so we're not going to have our IT people in the European Commission trying to build a, a new blockchain, but to buy something that is out there that is fit for the public services that's compliant with network information security and other requirements. Um, this is unique because, as I say, it should be fully compliant with the European Union, a key. If you have a so-called serious sector, whether it's finance or health or transport, you can't have something that's just saying, well, whatever happens, happens. The infrastructure, and in this case, if it's providing a service, has to be compliant. Uh, we want to leverage EU tools existing, such as EID, e-authentication, not to set up, again, new ones, though obviously it could collaborate with other private sectors. Uh, offers, supporting interoperability and open source, the idea that the solution would be open source and interoperable with things like Ethereum, Bitcoin, R3, etc. that are out there. And it would be built, as I already mentioned, through innovation procurement with the intention of stimulating startups. I think I didn't advance here. There I am. Okay, so what is our calendar, our agenda by September? So that's basically now, you could say, and we're working with, uh, with the member states. We have a European Blockchain Partnership member states working group to identify the use cases. I can already signal that the first ones will probably be reg tech, regulatory reporting, things that are already required. Obviously, some issues like digitalized health records, other things that aren't digital yet, isn't easy to do rapidly on a blockchain um, because it's not digital yet. 
Uh, by the end of the year, to have the uh, functional specifications and the idea would uh, have the first uh, services rolled out already next year, which is putting us in a very leading role along with uh, Dubai, Smart Dubai, who we, who we know as well. But uh, in fact, uh, the United States just came to us very recently, uh, the Chinese, others, and say that, okay, Europe is really ahead on this and this is very interesting. Can we pilot with you? And of course, we're being a bit cautious on how we would pilot with other parts of the world because we have to make sure that the thing works between our member states before going more broadly. Uh, something else that supports this, and we're going to hear a little bit about it from one of the experts who's involved there, is the European Blockchain Observatory and Forum. The partnership is the member states, so Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, I think France is also represented here. The observatory is experts, the industry, uh, people coming from NGOs, and the idea is to have an ex expertise hub to access, share, and produce and disseminate information. There's a map of existing initiatives. If you have a blockchain initiative and it isn't on the map yet, please put it there if you want publicity for it. It's a way also to find partners and find perhaps investors if it's a private sector initiative. To monitor technical developments and trends, develop expertise in community building, address sectoral and cross-cutting issues, interoperability, legal, governance. Uh, to build on EU interest use cases to support what we're doing. And I can signal a few things. We're coming, as uh, many of you know, to the end of this College of Commissioners. This, this government uh, will have new commissioners appointed next year or commissioners reappointed. So the legislative machine has slowed down or almost stopped other than things that have already been proposed. So looking to the next commission with the observatory and the member states, we're analyzing things like smart contracts, initial coin offerings, secondary markets for initial coin offerings that might, and I have to underline might, be the subject of legislative initiatives, but that obviously has to be based on an evidence base and, and inputs. Uh, three pillars. Um, you have the public face, uh, the blockchain uh, knowledge repository. Here's information about the forum, thematic reports. We have reports on the general data protection regulation in blockchain, blockchain innovation in Europe, e-identity in blockchain, case studies, videos, frequently asked questions. Uh, the blockchain map, again, uh, I think it needs to be populated more from the Baltics. I know we have more things going on than are signified there. Something might be because you want to keep things quiet commercially for, for a reason, which is obviously fine. But if you want to get publicity, go there. And then there's also a um, open forum discussion. So if you also want to see what other people are doing, if you want to network, that's there. Also exchange of information on different solutions, on e-identity, and so on. And you have the expert groups that are also here. There's one that is on legal and framework conditions, and the other one that is on use cases and transition scenarios. Scenarios. Uh, Giannis, who is here, who will be speaking later, is uh, one of the uh, one of the experts who was chosen for that. And again, they are giving us inputs for both building this European blockchain partnership, us and the member states, and also for any future policy initiatives we might undertake. Here's where you could find us, and I'm happy that this, uh, this presentation is distributed and disseminated. You can put it everywhere so you don't have to write it down. But here's where you can find the blockchain forum. Here's where you can follow it on Twitter. Uh, here's where you can register for the EU blockchain community. And here's where you can find me, and then I say thank you, and I think we can stay within the time allotted, and I'll see you again with the panel in a few minutes. <laughs>